trends to check the quality safety and adult trends of the food products you need a food testing laboratory and this is the duty of the entrepreneurs to ensure that food testing laboratory is equipped and accredited equipped means that laboratory has sufficient equipment to test the required parameters and it is accredited accreditation means the third party insurance that the laboratory is technical competence to ensure the technical competence in our country we have a board that is known as nabl it is called national accreditation board for testing and calibration laboratories this board is belongs to ministry of science and technology and they accredit the laboratory on the basis of iso 17025 2005 standard which is a global standards anywhere in the world the laboratories are, are accredited and their technical competence are ensured on the basis of iso 17025 to see the food testing laboratory there are some regulations which has to be followed like in the food testing laboratory we have to ensure that there is no outside contamination that's why you can see that we have a double door entry to check any outside contamination within the lab the second very important point is that the person who is coming with the samples is not directly interacted with the technical people working in the laboratory so these people are directly directed to the sample cell where the person responsible receive the samples and ensures that he has taken care of all the testing requirement of the customer the second important point within the sample cell is that the person sitting there he put the code number on the sample so the person who is testing the particular sample doesn't know the samples belongs to to whom so that's why the integrity and the confidentiality is is maintained and in generally if you see in the food testing laboratories there are three sections like instrumentation where the different instruments are there the chemical where the wet chemical analysis is being done the microbiology where the all the pathogens are being tested now i let you know the each and individual equipment and their uses in the laboratories and the, the different sections now we are in the microbiological section and this is the inoculation room and it is nothing like it is a like a operation theater we have to ensure that there is no outside contamination and our colleague is working on the laminar flow this equipment is the laminar flow where we ensure that the working plate form is sterile so the the air which is coming is zero zero filtered so there is no microbe on there and the samples which are being inoculated there the contamination which will come out only from the sample not from the environment as you are aware the microbes cannot be seen with the naked eye so these samples are inoculated into the different medias and after inoculation of the these different medias they are being incubated at different temperatures so these are the incubators here you can see once a particular temperature and time is maintained these bacteria grow in the micro in the colonies and here we can identify and we can see that it is also important while analyzing the different bacteria the different temperature is required different temperature required so we have a different incubators for different temperatures the 40 degree the 37 degree and so on now you see this is the colony counter under this colony counter we put the plate where the pathogens are there and we can count the pathogens we can identify the species by putting the standard slide under this microscope after proper magnification and now we can move to the next section now we are in chemical section 
I will let you know about the utility of the some of the equipment in chemical section. This is fat extraction unit, and by this unit, we extract the fat in any food product and know the quantity of the fat in a sample. Like this is a biscuit sample. We would like to know how much fat is in this biscuit. What we have to do? We have to crush the sample. and make into the powder form and this powder form sample we will put into the this thimble this white color unit and we put into the shock slit this apparatus is not a shock slit this is the flask shock slit and condenser so we put the sample in this white color uh, this thimble and ether is put into this flask and condens condenser is put over the this shock slit extractor then we set the certain temperature this water is circulated through the condenser so ether is cooled so and this ether is circulated again and again after certain hour of extraction like you see the ether is going down and the fat is dissolved into the ether and ether along with the fat is collected into the flask the flask is taken out and the ether is evaporated and the fat content is waste weight into the analytical balance and we know how much percentage of the fat is there in the biscuit now i'll inform about the another equipment now i will inform you about the protein estimation if you see any food product on the label the nutritional facts are there which contains protein fat carbohydrate and how much energy a product is getting to make sure to estimate that how much accurate these are we have to estimate protein fat and carbohydrate and this equipment is used for the protein estimation for example this is the juice sample fruit juice we have to take into this flask and digest it the digestion is being taken at a particular temperature and then it is to be heated at a particular temperature and the sample is digested and condensed once the sample is digested it becomes very clear once the sample is clear then you take for the distillation and titration by this way we can estimate the protein in any sample This is the equipment known as profound color grader. By this equipment we can know the color of the honey and this is the international standard requirement. What we have to do there is a cuvette we have to put the honey into the cuvette and we have to put on the light and match the color. And after matching the color we can note down the color of the honey how much color is there and it is recorded in mm now we are in the instrumentation section of this laboratory you see there are different equipments and i will explain few of them this is analytical balance and this balance is basically the backbone of the laboratory you start any analysis you have to use this analytical balance because you have to weigh accurately the chemicals the reagents and the sample and this is a very sophisticated balance where we can weigh up to 0.01 mg mg of any chemical or any sample then i move to the next equipment this is spectrophotometer where we do the estimations of the different uh, chemicals like iron phosphorus or the color so these are the different color colored samples or the color can be developed by a chemical reaction and this can be estimated by this equipment and ultimately the concentration can be known for example if you want to get the iron in a particular sample you develop the color and 
then get estimated by this equipment this is water activity meter where we can get the water activity of a product say this is the moong dal sample we have to crush it we have to put into the cubet and then we put into this sample cell and after that we put this hygrometer and we can read the water activity this indicates the probability of having the presence of the pathogens in a particular sample now this is the ph meter where we estimate the ph of any juice or any water sample any liquid sample we can estimate the ph first we have to calibrate this equipment by the standard ph 4 and 7 we take the sample into the flask and then we get the ph and the directly digital reading comes on to on to the equipment and we can note the reading if the ph is below 7 it indicates it is acidic if ph is more than 7 it indicates it is basic in nature or alkaline in nature this equipment is the conductivity meter and conductivity meter is generally conductivity is required to estimate in the water sample how much conductivity is there so we take water sample into the flask and directly put the electrode into it and conductivity can be read on this equipment you have seen a food testing laboratory which is accredited by nabl based on iso 17025 it ensures its technical competence technical competence in the sense that the manpower is qualified equipments are calibrated and up to the mark and the system is being followed you have also seen all the three sections of the laboratories like microbiological section where you have seen the microbiological testing in the chemical section you see all the chemical analysis in the instrumentation section you have seen that there are different equipments including sample cell where the samples are being registered and integrity is maintained you have seen most of the common equipments which are lying in the laboratory and they are used for the food testing as per the national and international standards thank you